with the current state of outbound. Um, so if you were not living under a rock last month, uh, Google and Yahoo announced and then retracted uh, their take to end this like mass cold outreach. So basically everyone was a little bit concerned that their domains were not going to be as effective. Um, they were blocking a lot of this cold email outbound. Um, however, they did end up retracting it. But I do think that uh, this is still going to be an issue and it's already an issue today. Um, so AI and spammers that are generating these cold outbound emails um, without any form of like co-piloting from a rep are spamming people's emails. And like whether Google or Yahoo ends up trying to put in precautions to end this, uh, this is still the case. So although there's not going to be um, any type of repercussions yet, uh, I do still think it's probably coming and standing out is still more challenging than ever. So if you're thinking about outbound pre-2023, 2024, um, it's really been considered a numbers game. So um, I actually used to be an SDR and I used to have to call 400 people a day. And it was just a numbers game. You hit up a thousand people and 10 of them will take a meeting. Um, and then in terms of marketing, it was all about generating leads in terms of volume and not necessarily about any type of conversion between stages. Um, which I think we're seeing more of that today um, in terms of marketing teams being evaluated on like quality conversions. So like a stage one to two or like zero to one, um, which is a kind of like a slow shift in this quality over quantity uh, journey that we're going into. Um, but it is going to get a lot harder for both marketing and sales teams to start hitting their quotas. All right, so I kind of went through this already. Um, outbound is changing. Um, did anyone else, I don't know if we did, we threw up the poll yet, Amber, um, like did the Google or Yahoo announcement make you think about needing to change the way that you currently do outbound? Like at any point when you saw these uh, reports where you like, oh shit, like some part of my outbound is going to need to change now. Um, I don't know what that is yet, but I have to start thinking about um, this shift in outbound. Um, and it already looks like, yeah, we're seeing a pretty decent split, which is kind of what I had anticipated, depending on like what type of an outbound motion you're running. Um, but this is essentially the three ways that us at User Gems are thinking about the switch to outbound. So um, I talked about a little bit already in terms of quality. Um, so that's just going to go in terms of like uh, your marketing generated leads, and then also any type of sales outreach and messaging and then tactics of reaching these people. Um, 40 stage or 40 step outreach sequences maybe are not going to work as well as they once did. Um, and really what became clear to user gems is that, you know, no matter how valuable some of these signals are, uh, it's just noise if reps aren't acting on it. So uh, this can go in terms of using signals. So things like, um, someone downloads a, uh, ebook on your website and then that gets funneled to sales or someone spent some time on your website. Uh, we don't really know who that person is, but like, here's a signal. So the more signals that you start to send to your sales team, the more overcrowded their workflow is going to be, and they're going to stop looking at all of them. Um, so something that we're working on currently is figuring out what valuable signals, uh, we want to start sending to sales teams. And not only how many how many are valuable, but how do we then automate the play that comes along with it? Um, the last thing I'll mention here is leveraging AI. And I actually think on my slide about this, I put leverage AI strategically, um, but I will mention the strategically here too. Um, everyone's trying to do something with AI. And I think something that I've been hearing a lot in my conversations uh, with other marketing and sales leaders is like, AI to generate messages for an outbound cadence that scrapes from LinkedIn or like something. And this real sentiment here is that I don't think anyone thinks that's going to be the way that AI is going to impact sales and marketing in the next year. Um, so in terms of what we're doing, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit how we use AI here for our prospecting, um, but it really has to do with pinpointing what accounts and what buyers are actually going to convert 
not what type of messaging that you think that they're going to, to need automatically. Um, however, you should continue to utilize any form of AI um, or other tools to craft meaningful and helpful content. But I want to make sure that that's not what we're picking up when I say AI. So I think that's where everyone's mind's going these days. All right, so the first one here, um, these are two uh, things that already exist at User Gems. Um, basically what we're trying to do here is we are trying to get really dialed in on not only what accounts we wanna go after, um, either on a monthly or a quarterly basis, however often you're like running different types of ABX. Uh, you don't necessarily have to run ABX to do this, but it will just help you prioritize what accounts are heating up um, and also what buyers you should be capturing. So we'll start with the accounts here. Um, we have a field called user gems, number of user gems. Um, it's available in everyone's Salesforce package. So if you are integrated with user gems in Salesforce, uh, you will have this field. And what it does, and it'll populate how many user gems are at each account. And the way that we use this here is um, we will pull in anyone over five user gems, uh, but you can also kind of think about this on how big a company is. Five is just kind of a rough number. Um, if you're selling to enterprise, maybe that would look more like 20. Um, and we automatically will populate all of the buyers within that account. So what this is saying to us is if there are at least five people who know user gems at this company, that is an account that I want to prospect immediately. Um, I want to not only contact all five of them, I want to contact all of my other buyers at that account um, and say, hey, have you have you talked to one of these people? Like they just joined your team, they used to use user gems. And then while you're doing that form of outreach, you're also doing your regular user gems outreach. Congrats on the new job. Um, maybe they're not the right buyer. Maybe they can refer you to somebody um, or maybe they can kind of start doing a little bit of groundswell with these other user gems that are at the account. So that's on the account level. Um, in terms of the person level, this is actually something new that we've rolled out this month. Um, right now you'll need your CSM's help to get this, um, but we are going to open this to everybody next month, um, but it is available. So if you you want to take a look at this, let me know. Um, what we, we can do here is when you give user gems your buyer persona, when you're signing up for user gems, uh, let's say it's something like I sell at user gems, to director plus of marketing, sales, and rev ops. Um, and I put that in user gems to say anyone with these personas I care about. Then what we did is we said, let's actually look at the people who bought user gems and see how many titles are actually missing in those opportunities. Um, so in this screenshot here, you can see this is another customer. Um, we looked at their persona and it actually only covered half of their buyers. So we looked at their closed one opportunity contacts in their CRM and then found out the persona that they gave user gems is not even half of the people that actually buy their product. Um, so then that's already missing out on 50% of people that are relevant. And we make it really easy in terms of like, you can see uh, the different titles here. Um, so in this sense, you might wanna start adding in like revenue operations manager because you found those 18 times, maybe like CMOs, marketing operations manager, kind of check down the list of additional titles that you would wanna add based on who's historically purchased from you in the past. Um, those who buy, so it really depends. So uh, Amber, if you wanna go back really quick, I want to answer this question from Jackie. Uh, we can do it with any report. So this, for example, is closed one opportunity contacts. But like if your team doesn't utilize uh, opportunity contacts, uh, we can you can send us a different report. So like you could say, um, uh, however you categorize your buyers, like we would definitely need some type of like opportunity or like uh, contact is a decision maker. Like we need to pull a report on something. It doesn't need to be primary. Um, and then we can use that, but we don't have to use like the primary op. This report in particular is also not primary ops. It's just anyone on an opportunity, um, but we can get more dialed in. We can get less dialed in. Um, and then we can still do that persona coverage percentage off whatever report that you give us based on what makes sense for how you capture buyers in your own instance. Um, I think there was one more. Um, 
This data is actually, yeah, this data is piped into Salesforce. So when we send you uh, the new record, we have a field that's uh, that's part of the user gem Salesforce package that is persona matching. So we'll be able to identify like if this person's persona matching, and then you can use that for any type of automated outreach. I think you mentioned like you have outreach, you can automatically add anyone who's persona matching to a sequence, um, or you can uh, you know select different filters so that you're able to see different views of like these are my buyers historically, and then like this is everybody else who's a user gem. So you're able to prioritize them differently. Um, okay, I think we're good here. Thanks, Amber. Um, okay, so in terms of leveraging AI, this is um, our UI specifically. Um, however, this is also available as an iframe in Salesforce. So like if your reps have our account tracking product um, and they don't wanna work out of a UI, they don't have to. Um, we do have this also available as an iframe. Um, the reason, though, that I like the UI is that we have the companies ranked from Warmest um, on the left-hand side here. So you can see um, if I'm in User Gems UI, I'm able to come in here as a sales rep and see the accounts prioritized. Um, and the way that we consider Warm is the amount of past champions and past users, um, people that were recently hired, how many people were recently promoted, how many persona matching buyers are at these accounts. Um, and we can surface those to you uh, so that the, the sales team can kind of go one by one down. Um, not only do we rank the companies by which one's most likely to convert, but we also rank the individual buyers. Um, and something cool about this feature is we don't just show you user gems generated contacts. We will pull anyone in your CRM at that account that is persona matching. So if you think back to who you define as your persona, this is why that's really important. You wanna make sure you have all of your buyers in here. Um, and then we'll show each buyer at each company who's most willing, who's most likely to convert. And the way that we like measure converting is who's most likely to um, go from someone received outreach and then now they are an opportunity. Um, so we not only learn from uh, like our own data that's syncing, like we can also then analyze the CRM and start pinpointing who we think is most likely to convert. Um, and this is again kind of still on the same premise of things like, were they most recently hired? Were they recently promoted? Were they a past buyer or were they just a user? Um, and then it kind of goes down until we start uh, ranking them by AI, um, just based on other data in your Salesforce um, that's not uh, relationship driven. Um, will it support other languages besides English? Uh, for the personas, this is actually a good question. And someone else had this, uh, and I'm trying to remember what ended up happening. We had someone that had personas in Portuguese and I can't quite remember. So, or can you email me and I'll dig up that chain. It was a very long time ago, um, that someone needed this in Portuguese and I just cannot remember what our engineering team had done. Cool. Thanks, Or. Um, uh, signals and plays. So these are, I kind of think these are becoming buzzwords, um, which is really sad because I thought they were really cool. Um, and now I'm looking at them over and over and over again. Um, and I'm hoping that they're not kishy yet, but, uh, I first want to explain like what we mean here by signals and plays. So in terms of signals, like I mentioned, these could kind of be, uh, Things like someone has shown intent by downloading something or was on your website or attended a webinar. Um, and then all of these are essentially like a cue that can say, hey, I think this person might be like exploring a solution to a problem they might have and are now looking to either explore or buy something. Um, the problem here, and I explained this a little bit earlier, is that the more signals that you're giving sales reps, the more they are going to ignore all of them. Um, and the reason here is like, they have all of these tasks that they're doing. They're taking calls. They're also maybe outbounding. Um, they're speaking to prospects. They're giving demos. They're doing all of this negotiation. Um, and then they have this like queue of signals and they just do not know where to start. They don't know what's important. They don't know what's actually going to convert. Um, and this kind of starts to fray on sales and marketing teams trust of like, these are the leads that I'm getting and I don't even know where to start. So I'm just not going to look at them at all. Um, so it's really important to make sure that the signals 
that you're giving to the sales team are valuable and also very well-defined play. Um, so now I'll get into what the play is. So this is a predefined set of actions that you want sales to be taking or marketing or automated completely. Um, and these should be different based on what signal they received. Um, so the reason this is important, and I don't know if anyone's experienced this yet, when you had started using the job change signal, um, so that is a signal in its itself. So um, someone changes jobs, there's now like some form of play that now has to happen. It's going into a marketing nurture. It's going into an outreach sequence. Sales is connecting with them on LinkedIn and then they're giving them a call. Like there is some predefined steps now that are happening after a user gems job change is um, surfaced. Um, and it's really hard to make sure that everyone is putting them in the same sequence that was proven to be most effective or is doing anything at all because um, maybe they have too many other signals. Um, or they just get forgotten. Um, truthfully, like I've seen it now in my last few years is like, as sales teams grow and evolve, like they really need to be like trained and retrained and reminded about these plays that are supposed to happen. And it should be like very clear on like, what is the end goal for me and what should my success be from initiating this play? Um, so with that, I will show one Thing that already exists and then one thing and then two things actually that will exist in q1 um so first thing we have done here is we have suggestions now on accounts of who you should add to a sequence um so this lives in rui the one that i had shown in two slides ago um and basically what it says is when you open up one of these accounts uh, you can see like who user gem suggests adding to a sequence. And then you can click show me and it'll only show the people that we think are the best person to reach out to right now. Um, something that we're going to be able to do next month is automate this based on how many people at a company should be receiving outreach. Um, so if you think about it this way, you don't want to hit like 50 people with a sequence all at once at the same company, especially if they're all around the same buyer persona, they probably all know each other. Um, and also it's just a little bit spammy and we don't want to get into the AI spam. Uh, so we're going to be able to, to set up very clear parameters of like who we suggest adding to a sequence. Um, and then maybe one of your reps can co-pilot it like it is now, where like there still would be a manual action from a rep to then physically add them to a sequence. Um, or we can automate the entire process. Um, and the way that we do this is we, uh, actually automatically sequence all of our job changes based on what their past relationship was. So we track um, not only just our past buyers, but we we track end users uh, for referrals. We track closed lost opportunity contacts. We track open op contacts. We track kind of like anyone who has ever been in the user gems platform or like used user gems. Um, and then we also automate based on where they go to. Um, so if a past user goes to a target account, they actually get um, more of a like higher touch outreach sequence than if someone were to have went to an account that's totally out of our radar. Um, but what I will say is that we do try to reach out to everyone. It just depends on like the level of outreach that our ADRs will curate to each sequence. Um, and then these two things are really exciting. So we are really leaning into the signals in 2024. Um, so actually what I would love to know, and if anyone has super strong thoughts about it, I'd love to meet, um, for like 15, 20 minutes and just kind of like talk about what signals you think are like total bullshit and what signals you think would be really cool. Um, because I think signals have a lot of bad rap because there's just like so many useless ones. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're, we're really leaning into the relationship signals because that's what user gems is already built on. Um, people who know you um, or people who have changed jobs, like those types of um, signals are things that we already do. Um, so we don't want to go like totally off the rails and start like tracking webinar signups. Um, so the first one that we're rolling out is asking for referrals at specific milestones. So basically what this will look like is someone signs on as a customer um, and we can generate who uh, you should ask them for a referral from, from their past company. Um, so first we're gonna do this a little bit manually um, where our sales rep would need to go in and kind of verify, but then we're gonna be able to automate the entire process. So if a deal closes, this person uh, 
actually worked at Google and they know this person, like ask them for a referral immediately. And then we'll be able to trigger an entire play of um, here's a message that you can send the CSM or here's the message that you can send this person to ask for a referral. And we'll be able to do the entire process for you. Um, and we can prescribe kind of all of the outreach, uh, kind of similarly to how we provide all of the outreach messaging for job changes. Um, so that's the first thing we're doing. The second one we're doing is uh, actually been highly requested from a lot of our customers over the last year. So we thought it now would be a good time uh, to work on this as a real signal um, would be automatically capturing new customers, competitors, um, and then categorizing that as a target account that your sales team should go after. Um, so if you're thinking about it uh, in the term of like, I just sold this company um, and they have these three competitors. I'm also now going to go try to sell those three competitors and user gems will be able to surface those competitors for you um, and say why that they are now should be a target. And this could be like a trigger for your ABM for the next month. Uh, so they can automatically add them to whatever ABX or ABM program that you have. Um, or you could decide to pass these on to sales immediately um, and get them hopefully in a sales cycle because their competitor one already shows that they are experiencing some some of the problems that you solve because they have bought you. Um, they're probably in a very similar situation as their competitor. And it's probably a little bit of an easier sell if you have a competitor's name that's already your customer and they're using some tool um, that's helping them and they don't want to fall behind. So we also see that a little bit, um, depending on what industry you're in, especially for something like ours, where like pipeline generation is our main like core value prop. Uh, we can see like, if company A has a pipeline generation problem and company B is their competitor and they sell to the same market, then you probably also have a pipeline generation problem. Um, so that's the way that we're planning on using it here internally. More to come on this one. We test everything ourselves first um, with our own sales teams. Uh, we iterate on it. We put in some automation and then we ship it to our customers. So stay tuned for that. And then just our last slide here, I had asked uh, Derek and Sarah, uh, our head of sales and our head of our account development team for some tips for um, any types of individual contributors that come to these. Um, so really big on working with RevOps, um, making sure that um, you have the most successful reporting. Like our RevOps team is great in terms of like helping to make sure like what has been what has been working for you last month? Like, can we try to do something this month that looks the same or what's not working? And here's the data to prove why. Um, making sure everything is working within your opportunities is super important. And then in terms of what we do here at our ADR team, which is the last bullet, uh, we have something called pet accounts where like our ADRs will like select accounts. Like we have our ABM program that our marketing and sales team join and collaborate on of picking. Um, but then the ADRs get to have like their own accounts that they are really interested in or like they think are really cool um, and they can prospect into them separately on their own. Um, so what we do here is, is we'll partner with them as well for marketing and our ADR team um, and make sure they're really well researched, um, hit them from both like sales and marketing together because we found uh, that those work the best. Um, and then we also will set up some targeted ads um, like our, our normal ABM, uh, if you've seen those in the past, um, for these key accounts. Um, I saw another question. Yeah, so the delivery currently um we're doing it we're building it in our ui um on amber do you mind going actually like back to where like the ui was and i'll like kind of explain where we envision this happening um yeah this one uh so basically what it'll look like here is as the prospects are ranked there'll also be a tab on the top that's like not visible right now which will say champion referrals um and at from each account you'll be able to see like who can, who you should be referred to and who can refer you to somebody uh, within this screen. Uh, and again, we're, we have this like in our own UI and also in a Salesforce iframe. So right now they're not Salesforce notifications. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think it's out of the question. Um, I'm just thinking through like how we would label this and then could like maybe build a notification flow off of it. Would Salesforce tasks be 
better. I think email notifications are also like quite possible. Yeah. Um, is it because, well, what if it's in the iframe in Salesforce? Like, would they also not go into Salesforce and the accounts and like look through prospects that way? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's available. So we can also like put this screen in, uh, in Salesforce. Yeah. Cool. I'll bring through the email notifications. Um, Salesforce is a little bit trickier because we would have to generate them from Salesforce. But yeah, no, great questions, everyone. Um, Jackie, if you ever want to chat, let me know. Um, and yeah, I think that was it, Amber. And I know we're just at time. I'm not sure if anyone, if anyone else has any questions, I'm happy to stay on. Um, or if anyone wants to add me on LinkedIn and we can chat, like also happy to do that. Yeah. So um, you can add Justine or email her at justine at usergems.com. And if you have a question for your CSM and you don't know their contact information, you can also email Justine or gems yeah. underscore CSM at usergems. Yeah. We will find your CSM or we will find me. Someone will answer. I'll hook you up. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Happy new year. Uh, we will see you all in our dig deeper sessions in 2024. Um, which we're super excited for. Thanks, Justine. Bye everyone.